We are keepers of the forest, waters of the sea. We live alongside with nature in perfect harmony. We call upon each one of you for a little more understanding. Together we can win the battle, alone we have no chance. We must pull together. On Treaty Day, the first day of October 2008, the chiefs and councils of the 13 Mi'kmaq communities of Nova Scotia came together at Province House, the seat of the Nova Scotia legislature in Halifax, to proclaim and assert the nationhood of the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia over their traditional lands and waters. Through this proclamation, the Mi'kmaq chiefs and councils of Nova Scotia agreed to work together to develop a Mi'kmaq governance structure that unites and empowers our nation to enhance the quality of life and well-being of our people. This documentary captures the feelings of the Assembly of Nova Scotia chiefs after the proclamation of Mi'kmaq nationhood. Our story begins with Acadia Chief Deborah Robinson proclaiming nationhood inside Province House. The Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia Nationhood Proclamation. <laughs> 256 years ago, the Mi'kmaq signed the Treaty of 1752. This is one within the covenant of treaties signed between the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia and the Crown from 1725 to 1761. We recognize and affirm that our treaties are made nation to nation by their respective governments. The chiefs of Nova Scotia hereby come together to proclaim and assert nationhood of the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia over our traditional lands and waters. We, the chiefs and councils of Nova Scotia, as the elected representatives of the Mi'kmaq, agree to work together to develop a Mi'kmaq governance structure that will unite and empower our nation to enhance the quality of life and well-being of our people. Proclaimed at Halifax, Nova Scotia, this first day of October 2008. Thank you, Willalio. I was very proud. It gave me great pride to be able to proclaim uh, the English version of the proclamation alongside, more so, alongside my colleague, Chief Terry Paul, who proclaimed the proclamation in Mi'kmaq. I think it's historical, it's significant, it's positive, it's a, it's a step in the right direction for the government of the day to say, look, we know what we've been fighting for, but we finally, finally have it written and have proclaimed our, pos our position of nationhood to the government of the day and most importantly to our own people. For me it was a great day because it, it, beca it becomes a new way of life and a new way of doing business with the government. It's about re re uh, affirming our identity as the Mi'kmaq people of Nova Scotia under, uh, under one nationhood. Uh, where the uh, 13 uh, reserves come as one government now. They signed a piece of history. We got a 
band of seven, seven, almost 800 people. And it's just a lot better having, you know, it's because only behind us and Waikagama to Bear River to Annapolis, all, all the, everybody who signed chapel on everybody, member two. So I think it's going to be one of more than one of the best things that we did, I guess. I feel that uh, when we signed this proclamation uh, with the heads of government and the bands of Nova Scotia, I felt that uh, we had a, a team effort that uh, we can work together. You know? I've been to a number of Treaty Day events and this last Treaty Day in 2008, with having the signing of the proclamation, uh, it just felt like a huge step for the Mi'kmaq. It was a huge, huge accomplishment for our, um, for the Mi'kmaq people. I see it as a document for us to work together in unity to achieve our goals that we want to do in the future. You know, this is to get us to work together as a unit, you know, to try to achieve that goal. The proclamation, I, I believe, it's an awareness, an awakening that we do need to organize ourselves and to be more effective um, in the way we represent our issues and challenges. The proclamation at the end of the day is that first seed and first step and the awakening that we are moving in a forward direction and we are starting to work together. The good thing about the proclamation is that there is no other bands or, you know what I'm saying, there's no bands could go out there and, and the government could give them a set, a set price to, do, um, to go against us. We're, we all sign it and we're all one nation. And I think if we stick with one nation again, you know, I, I think we'll do fine. It was an honor for me to sign that you know, on behalf of Indian Brook and the 13 other bands. I felt very important at that time and I, and I just felt like my name is on one of those documents that my great-great-grandchildren are going to get to see and, uh, and, and all of our children. The, uh, the proclamation to me means that we're finally taking the step to say that we're one nation, Mi'kmaq nation, and that uh, we as the Mi'kmaq are to be recognized as a government, as a Mi'kmaq government, as one. I was part of it in, in signing the proclamation. And uh, like I say, I was only chief for six months, but when I seen it, like my eyes light up. Proclamation. <laughs> Sama, counselor, the Nankatemi, the follow Ado, Rosla, Ajig Lokodoj, future generation, Janna, what's good Aj? I just thought it was a great day for everyone when I signed, you know. Um, I could th see a big giant step for the uh, Mi'kmaq Nation as a whole. This is freedom for us. This, is, this is, was a big, exciting day. I'm just so um, proud, I'm proud for sure, and I'm, I'm, I'm just so uh, honored for the Chiefs to allow me to, to say the proclamation in Mi'kmaq. You know, it's just probably one of the uh, highlights in my life, you know, the, being able to do that and being allowed to do that. I, I just, uh, you know, that's one of the great highlights in my, uh, my life as, as a Chief and as a Mi'kmaq. The proclamation is a very important to our Mi'kmaq because it, uh, it, it, it states the commitment that we have, uh, you know, that the chiefs have uh, to uh, unite our people. It's very important to do whatever we have to do to preserve our identity, our unique identity, um, you know, as to who we are. And we are a nation, not people. We are Mi'kmaq and we have a right to govern ourselves. If we don't declare and recognize ourselves as who we are, 
They will continue to consider us a special interest group. They will always treat us in that way. Treaties were not made with special interest groups or minority groups. They were made nation to nation. It seems to me they forget, they forget that we have a covenant chain of treaties. They were peace and friendship treaties. We never gave up any of our resources, and we never gave up any of our land base. Through the resources that, that are taken out of our land right now, the Mi'kmaq people are getting pennies on the dollar, and most of the time we're not even getting that. We were here first, and we have our own uh, way of doing business, and we need to be afforded the respect and the opportunity along with the resources to do that. When the Marshall decision came down, they, they, they sort of separate and conquer the Mi'kmaq people that way. But with this proclamation, that's going to change. Because the 13th Chiefs finally realized, well, yeah, we are a, a government. And we should be doing government business all as one, not 13. So this here gives us a better leverage on, on the economic development and the businesses and, and the way we do business here in Nova Scotia. I think the way it is now, the Indian Act or INAC, you know, they're limiting us. I have that problem that I feel that we are administrators. They send the money, we sign the contribution agreement, then we do it. We have to do all the reports. We're accountable to them. We should be accountable to our own people and should be transparent to our own people. I think the proclamation is important uh, as a first step to proclaim that we are a nation that would empower our communities and our people to be recognized as the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia and the Mi'kmaq nation moving forward towards our, our self-government. It will open many doors and it'll, it'll, it's, it's an opening of the first door and it will open many more to come in economic development, in how we govern ourselves and how we see ourselves as a people. And empowerment and pride is, is one of the things that the proclamation one of the two doors that the proclamation will open. Definitely it'll make us stronger and, um, you know, uh, if things need to be come, come down to it, like um, self-government, I mean, we'll, we'll be strong with a voice. Definitely be strong with a voice. I think we could come together and set up our own uh, management plan on fishing, uh, housing, the whole shebang of it, right? Yes, we all have differences. We all have different barriers, expectations on community to community levels. And it's okay to be different. It's okay to have different organizations because the chiefs are ahead of all of those. We all make the same decisions. We are all under the same Indian Act. We are all have the same problems. And we are all Mi'kmaq. A Mi'kmaq is a Mi'kmaq is a Mi'kmaq. It doesn't matter where the Mi'kmaq lives, you know, and they have the same rights as any other Mi'kmaq, no matter where they live, and that we should be all inclusive, that we should include everybody that's Mi'kmaq, whether they live on or off the reserve. We didn't create the reservations. That's a product of the government, you know, to corral us in a certain place where they can better administer us. That's all what reserves are. We didn't create those boundaries. You know, as far as I'm concerned, we own the whole province. So there's nobody that lives on the outside. Government has really, you know, messed us up in, in, in creating the division uh, of residency. I think it's important that uh everybody be recognized. And the reserve lands are, that was given, by, given to us by the government. So, and all of Nova Scotia used to be ours. It is still ours. But right now we're living on government land and, uh, and but our people are still scattered all over the place. Huh? My comment on off reserve, I don't know what this in, uh, it, it's not in, it's not in my head, officer. That term don't exist to me. Uh, and delegado is a term, officer, we're on reserve. I mean, the concern I mean is we're Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia. Tampastet Leon is still Mi'kmaq. As we talk about the proclamation, um, 
it considers all the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia, and it considers all of Nova Scotia. Well, this air proclamation is going to going to going to turn everything around. Like right now, there's so many organizations out there now. Like you have NATO Council, and then you have NATO Women, and then you have. Uh, different organizations, but with this here proclamation, this is all going to come under one umbrella. The 13 chiefs is going to represent all of Mi'kmaq, Nova Scotia. Whether it's, I hate to use the term on reserve or off reserve, if they're in Nova Scotia and they're Mi'kmaq, then they're part of the Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia. And I talk about the whole province of Nova Scotia. I don't reserve, that's the whole, if you want to call it a reserve, then that's the whole reserve I'm talking about. I'm probably one of the strongest advocates, as, as I stated earlier, in terms of uh, servicing all Mi'kmaq and believing that all Mi'kmaq are equal no matter where you live, regardless of where your residence is. Because of course, it's who you are as an individual. It flows through your veins and through your life and how you live your life and who you are. Wherever life takes you in your journey does not take away who you are as a Mi'kmaq. Like I say, it's very exciting to me right now, looking 10 or 15 generations down the road, it really excites me where the Mi'kmaq people are going to go under this here nationhood. The vision I'd like to see is that uh, we, we have very strong governments, that our people are very prosperous. I look forward to the day where I'm discussing our labor shortages, that we have everybody working, that we have so much jobs that we need to go on the outside to find people to work, to work for us, and that we're able to create our own revenues and with very little government help, if any. With global warming and you know, polar ice melting and all this stuff that's going on in the world because of industry and and uh, and uh, loss of the ozone layer. You know, those type of things are, are are global concerns. They're not just the concerns of the Mi'kmaq, but if we if we um, become the, uh, uh, recognized as as a nation, and then we deal to nation to nation, and I do believe that we're doing that as we speak. As a third government, I think we will be very powerful in protecting the environment and the sustainability of Nova Scotia's resources. There'll be a time when the Mi'kmaq will have their biologists, our fishery officers, technicians. We would have research vessels. We've done it. And I know for a fact that we're capable. Well, we're going to have a lot more. Pretty soon we're going to have lawyers, doctors. Our children are going to be lawyers, to doctors, to you name it, everything, I guess. And they'll be not really on the reserve, but they'll be, they'll be on their own and they'll be doing good. Sometime down the road, I don't know, it might take you 10 years, maybe a little more, that, you know, we'll have our own governor general. It may not be a governor general, be be one of our hierarchies, whoever we have. We'll have our own people taking care of our fisheries, ministers, if you want to put it that way, or chiefs, whatever we decide, whatever the people, grassroots people want. Younger people, school children, I said, walk with your head held high and full of pride. You're a Mi'kmaq person. The Mi'kmaq people, contribute to the early settlers, taught them how to survive in the wilderness, how to tan hides, all the herbal medicine they had. We contribute a lot to the foundation at the beginning of what they call Canada today. At one point in time, I, I could remember when some child came up to me and um, he, he was going to school off the reserve and it was down in Shibonagli and he said, um, the teachers told him, or someone told him, who are you? And he says, um, he said his name. Now, wouldn't it be beautiful to say, I'm Mi'kmaq? There's a way. If there is a will, the old saying, if there's a will, there's a way. Well, there is. And I think the responsibility lies upon us. We were the keepers of the land. We were self-sufficient one time before, and we need to get back there. 
and then our true values and principles will come back. And that's what I want to see out of all of this. To me, I'd like to be able to see our future generations really finding that balance. How do you still maintain your pride as being a Mi'kmaq person? And I don't mean from an ego sense, but you know, the pride where you have respect for the lands, respect for the Creator, respect for everything that the Creator gives you on a daily basis as gifts. That would be a wonderful vision, to be able to hear the young people growing up or seeing the young people growing up with that. I guess it's a whole new world out there that um, we are part of. I like to see the Chief and Council and the Grand Council working together as one body, understanding each other and sharing their ideas. Anyway, you know, 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 we have to move forward together. We have to move forward as a people. You know, we have to move forward. There's so much stuff that we can do just by working together. When you look at uh, other provinces in the Mi'kmaq there, you know, we are, you know, if we're going to be a nation, and when you look at nationhood, you know, we're all going to have to get together sometime. This, to me, this is just the starting point. It doesn't matter who takes the lead, you see. We're looking at Nova Scotia right now other provinces will follow. But if we only keep on listening to the Indian Act, let's say the government, our government has to move us forward, not the federal government. I think it's time that we start demanding this is what we want. proclamation <laughs> Wajadi Gemk, Nova Scotia, Migma, Ah, Elke Wagi, seventeen twenty five, Missa, seventeen sixty one. Tell Nimi to Wego, Nah, Ah, Keji to Wego, Ula, Uncle Ramcoel, Kissi to Little, Bilumi Majuino, Government to Moa. Sarma, Nova Scotia, Mautes Kadijik, Up Disco, Kinuaduano, Wingwe. Wigamawa, ah, Mawian Kwesawa, Ted, ah, Meche, Kelodi Midij, Mumamigmo, ah, someone. Ninen Sama, Nabus Gosha, Niganusa, Ufjit Migma. Well, Denimek, Maulugudinen, ah, Uldun and Geluk, Government. Dan, Maunada, ah, Mogiganawalada, Nigamana, Ufjit, Najigalukan, Mimajuan, ah, del volor tidich. Ula gising tu pontasik, chibuktu, nobu skosha, neut desigunik, wige wigos, 2008. Wala liyo. We're here forever. I mean, we're not ever going to leave this place. You know, we're Micmacs, we were the first ones here, um, we'll be the last ones here. And everybody will be united with this here, with this proclamation, everybody will be reunited and everybody will help each other and that will be real good. The future, I think, um, possibilities are endless. Whether it's federal or provincial, municipal, it doesn't matter. We will be there and we will be sitting at the table in a rightful place. I say, well, we get our work cut out for us. Leopoiga, Nina, Salmajikwadmino, Asewa, Asin, 
This is history in the making, though. But hoping alone doesn't produce results, it's actions. And I think if we are strong and confident enough and plan properly and empower broad-based action with all our advisors, you know, young and old, then we start making some headway with what we want as a people. There's an awakening going on. I, I call us the rekindling generation. I think it's most important to remember, all of us, where we come from and who we are. I, I know it has to come from us. Hey, stand up, be counted, be proud. Be proud to be Mi'kmaq. Never give up. Never give up. Danger and we're running out of time for an Indian uprising.